It is day three of 10 days of statues and we have a new piece right here. And as you saw in the description, it's going to be an assembly. Well, how the hell is that going to happen? It's already assembled. Well, we are going to disassemble, disassemble one point. If you can figure out where that's from, disassemble them bison, and then we'll rebuild him together. So, uh, people that actually like that, and then we will going to, we're going to do the review. So really excited about M. Bison here. He is, he's pretty damn cool to be honest with you. So really excited to have him. So let's start an disassemble and then an assembly. Extreme Collectibles here with an assembly and a review. So first things first, we're gonna assemble this guy. And if you can't tell, it is a pop culture shock uh, piece, PCS. And with PCS is the white glove treatment. So I have probably about a dozen pair of these, if not more. And I like to wear them and either pretend that I am A, a butler, or B, committing a crime. I was going to try and do close-ups on the assembly here, but this some bitch is so tall, it's just going to be issues. So let's uh, dive right in to the assembly of quarter scale M. Bison from PCS. Let the assembly begin. I feel like a uh, factory worker. Do they still do that? Production lines or is it all automated now? Uh, also on a... Uh, Another note, if you guys hear a lot of noise, there's like 20 people painting the exterior of my house right now. So, uh, first, his bottom half of his body sits on a key and then an electronic peg. It is extremely heavy. This is an extremely heavy statue. Very surprised by that. But hopefully it means good quality. Uh, there are directions, but directions are for what? Whoever answers first gets a point. And this is not going on. I'm trying not to stand up. And the reason I'm not standing up is whoever answers first gets a point. And this is not going on at all. Yep, we're gonna have to do some blurring here. Well, I figured it out. M. Bison doesn't have a cape, but he does have a dress. This is why maybe instructions are not for pussies. Could almost seriously damage a statue. And I'm gonna let you know right now, spoiler in the review, I don't like his dress. And then you have two switch out options for the arms. One of mine did come damaged, which we're gonna look at with background info. And there we have the assembly. Pretty easy. Power plug, we'll look at it lit up. So let me gather my thoughts and uh, throw away the evidence of the gloves and we will do the review on Pop Culture Shock Toys Quarter Scale M Bison Ultra Drive slash EX. Extreme Collectibles here with Pop Culture Shock Toys Quarter Scale M Bison I think it's called the Psycho Drive, Ultra Drive, something like that. This is the exclusive. Pop Culture Shock Toys made uh, 800 of these. 300 were the exclusive version, which we're going to talk about the differences in a moment, and 500 were the collector's edition. I believe they're still available. Retail price was right around $530, $540. They also made a Player 2 variant that was black. 
costume black, not skin black. And uh, I don't know the ES on that, but you can look that up if you want to. I purchased this guy because I have a uh, Max 150 right next to my main arcade game that has Street Fighter and uh, Mortal Kombat. Those are my two favorite video games as far as uh, arcade style. Let's actually, here's a picture of what he's gonna look like up there with the rest of the Street Fighter pieces. My Street Fighter collection is about complete. I do have their Guile on order, and after seeing M. Bison here, kind of a spoiler, I will probably get the Guile or keep him on order. So the differences between the exclusive is the exclusive version has these hands. Here's a close-up, where his power is just kind of draining out of him, where the collectors, the regular edition, are just normal hands, same position. And we'll briefly review the paint and the sculpt on both of those. Then the exclusive actually comes with three portraits as opposed to just the one that the collector's edition has. And I don't believe they call it collector's edition, but here's the three different portraits. So here's your first one. It's kind of a uh, you know mouth closed, kind of a badass. They all have whited out eyes. Next one, his mouth is slightly opened where he's gritting his teeth. And I think this is probably my favorite, how I'm gonna display it. And then the last is kind of the evil, sinister laugh. And we're briefly going to talk, talk about all three portraits when we go to paint and sculpt. So Pop Culture Shock Toys, if you don't know who they are, they used to be pretty big in the statue game. They're still, they still have decent presence. However, they no longer distribute their pieces because they had some uh, ownership changes and some customer service issues. So they now rely on other distributors. Sideshow is their main one. But they still make statues. Uh, they do make really good statues. However, they have a lot of delays. Their pieces don't hold their value. So anytime you buy one, you have to be prepared that it instantly drops value. And unfortunately, it's not like it drops 5% or 10%, sometimes up to 40%, which is unfortunate because they, they do put out some really neat stuff. And I think this statue is, is part of that really neat stuff. Dimensions on this guy, for exact dimensions, go to PCS or Sideshow's website, but he's about 16 inches wide, uh, 20, let me go to the front here, 26 inches tall, and then he's about 12 inches deep. Another cool factor about this is he does have a light up feature. So here is a picture of the light up feature, and I actually haven't even plugged it in and seen it yet, so this is a picture I'm taking after the fact. So I hope it looks cool. And from my understanding, it'll work with multiple heads, but I could be wrong, I'll figure that out later. Let's talk about the concept and design of this guy. So M. Bison, he's the boss of Street Fighter. If you don't know what Street Fighter is, it's kind of weird you're watching this, but uh, Street Fighter is a arcade versus style video game. It is probably my favorite game of all time. Growing up, I kicked ass at it. I, uh, Ken was, well, Ken was my older brother's uh, main guy, and ironically, my older brother's name is Ken. And so I always had to pick Ryu, just because we couldn't be the same person, because you can't copy your older brother. But Ken is my favorite character. I could kill anyone with him. And M. Bison is the main boss, who if you're playing player versus player, you can fight each other. But uh, if you're just playing against the computer, he's the final guy that you fight, and he has a series of uh, uh, bosses underneath him. And uh, if I'm saying the names wrong, you know who I'm talking to. I don't really care because it was always, you know, Asian sounding voice, computerized voices saying their names. But I believe it's pronounced M. Bison. But he's a badass boss, in my opinion. You know, he's not a Shao Kahn or anything like that, but he's just a badass boss. And I think they embody that in this statue. It has kind of this ultra line base. A lot of their bases and their ultra line follow this style. It's a circular uh, risen base. And he's on here jumping. One of his signature moves is a high jump in the air where he jumps on the opponent's head. And he has this purple goo, which honestly, I'm not sure what it is underneath him on the bottom. But moving up, very muscular, very powerful, and again, he has that uh, purple power, the flames kind of coming out of his hands, and his hands have turned into that translucent uh, power, which we're going to discuss. And then his head, just really badass, and I, I think this is the proper way to showcase a boss, the boss of the game. One thing I didn't talk about in the delivery, I did have a damaged piece, 
One of these flames up here is broken off. So here's a picture of that. So unfortunately, that's three for three. If you've watched my last two PCS reviews, it was Sub-Zero and, uh, and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Uh, they, they had issues as well. Three for three on broken issues. And I swear every time, P uh, Sideshow doesn't care. They just say, here's 40 bucks credit. Do you want it? Or do you want to give up the statue, which we're now out of stock on? So I'll probably take some credit even though it probably resells for less than that now. So really cool concept. I am really worried about the design on two parts. One, a lot of weight right here, a lot of weight. So leaning, who knows what's gonna happen. Um, the other issue is these flames are touching his shoulder pads, which is really evident with PCS. It seems like they have a lot of rubbing. Uh, there's gotta be a that's what she said joke in there. I'm tired. 10 days of statues and we're only on day number three. Uh, so it's rubbing right on the shoulder pad, which is an issue. And his dress in the middle here, um, not too sure about it. Otherwise, the design is pretty smart. Uh, I like the fact it came in multiple pieces. I it seems to flow really well. So we'll see how it holds up over time, but there are some serious uh, issues there. Plus if I reship it, I'm afraid one of these flames is gonna break again. Paint and sculpt on this guy, starting at the bottom. So this ultra circular base, it has this metallic look, which is different than the other ones. But it, like I said, it's very similar in shape. And I like it, I like it. It's, it's shiny, it's metallic. It's not boring, but it's simple. And then kind of the source of his purple power. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. It almost looks like a balloon on the inside. So kind of an interesting choice there, and more conceptually than paint and sculpt. Then the purple translucent resin, and again, I'm not sure what this is supposed to signify. I know he would turn on fire and uh, you know, do, I can't remember the name of the move. It might've been the driver or something like that. Someone comment what that move is. He would turn on fire, but it wasn't purple flames. So I'm not sure what this is, but I like how it's stepping up. It is true transparent resin, almost transparent. There's some darker purples make it not so, but it makes the statue pop and it shows him some power, shows his power, so I like that. And starting at his boots here, uh, they look okay. Uh, his whole posture, he's really short and stocky and muscular. The boots look okay. Nothing to look ho uh, right home about. They're a little um, toyish looking, but there are some decent folds in the sculpt, some tread on the bottom, kind of this monotone black color. Not a huge fan, but I won't be staring at his boots. And the majority of the front of his boots is covered up by these metallic plates that do look good. They're true to the character, um, shin guards, knee guards. They did a bad job with the wear and scoring on here. It's supposed to be scratches, but it looks like they just slandered on some black paint. You can feel a little bit of sculpt in it, but it almost looks like they just hacked it up with a sharp object. So I think that's a miss. The colors on his uniform are really solid. This purple with some black layering in it, really well done. His pants are a little too baggy for me, but I understand the position of the statue would make them baggy, so they did a good job exemplifying the, the folds and the seam. His zipper area could look a little bit better. And he has huge uh, child-bearing hips. Then his dress, uh, again, I just don't like it. I know it's true to the character and he's in mid-flight, so the flow of it is probably correct, but I think the statue would have looked cooler without it. I wish they would have made an options with and without it. I'm just not a fan of the style, but I think a lot of people will be. I like the black trim along the sides. There is some uh, paint issues where it's not completely clean between the red and the black, unfortunately. But they did do a good job with the paint transition on the belt. Not only around the uh, yellow lightning bolt in the middle, but the seams on the side and where that meets the rest of the costume. Then moving up again, really stocky anatomy. It's kind of weird uh, that his, by his ribs are farther out than his chest, but he is a cartoon character, a video game character. And you can still see some of the folds right there in that same monotone red color. I like the anatomy on his back, kind of almost uh, overbearing, and it shows 
Again, really good uh, seams and rips in his, or uh, folds in his costume, really showing that muscular status. And same with his biceps. His biceps, the anatomy is probably the best on. Uh, his biceps, triceps, shoulders look really, really good. Great sculpt around that. Then his shoulder blades, very similar to his uh, shin guards. They're a little bit lighter, but they still have some of that uh, scoring that I'm not a huge fan of. It doesn't look bad. It just, I think there's some missed opportunity. And the same can be said about his wrist gauntlets. They look a little bit better than his shin guards. And then here, his, his non-exclusive hands, great coloring on the skin and his nails. Uh, kind of this translucent resin on his nails to make them shine. Really good sculpt on this hand. Again, it's stocky, but not too fat. You can see some of the bones. And then looking at his translucent ha hands with the power and flames coming out of them, really cool. So you can tell they use the same base sculpt for it, but then just use the, the translucent uh, purple instead and have flames coming out of it. I like how it's flowing back. And again, I don't remember this from the game, but I'm really glad they did it on the statue because I think it, 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 it really shows his power more, especially as a boss. And then let's look at it, this portrait here. So this is the one where his mouth is completely closed. His hat is identical on all of the different portraits, but it looks good. It's the same shading as his uniform, almost looks a little bit darker. I like the black seam on the top and the M. Bison symbol, the golden skull with wings. Really good job on his hat and then the bill. And then great flesh tones on this, very true to the character. His neck is way too big, but it probably is accurate to the game. Especially on the back, it's just so stocky. But good expression on his face. I've never looked that close at M. Bison's face. But he kind of looks like a, you know, really pissed old man on this, which is kind of who he is. I like the white out in his eyes, again, showing some of that power, and I think it lights up. You guys already saw that, I haven't yet. But then his butt chin is way too much on this portrait, which is why I, I just don't like it. That butt chin just takes away from everything. And then moving to his next portrait, a lot of the same stuff except completely different expression and his mouth is wide open and laughing. It is a decent sculpt on the mouth around the lips and the teeth and the tongue on the bottom. However, the top's a huge miss. They should have left it uh, slightly closed because looking at the top, and I'm going to have him displayed up high, you can kind of see that they really didn't do much on the inside there. And then the last one, again, this is probably my favorite. I do have one big issue with this one. I like the expression a lot more. I don't like the way they did his gums. His gums just look a little strange and some of his teeth are kind of blended together. So I think they missed some opportunity there. Some of these portraits, I wish you could meld them together. I wish I could do this one without the butt chin. Um, showing some teeth, but not so gummy. But I do like the fact there's three different portraits, so you gotta give them props for that. So overall, I am happy with the piece. I'm gonna keep it. I need to connect the light up feature to my cabinet and take some pictures for you guys for the review here. So this was day three of 10. Tomorrow is Saturday, August 10th. Uh, and that'll be day four, like I said, probably the piece I'm most excited about of these 10 days. And uh, I have everyday plans. Some of them I don't know which order I'm going to do. And then we'll go back to reviews and videos every other day instead of 10 days in a row. But let me know what you think of this guy. Let me know what you think of PCS in general. Uh, my opinion is they make great pieces. They have some quality issues. They have customer service issues. They have some you know, supply and, and logistic issues. But I do appreciate that their pieces are so affordable. But granted, this is only so affordable because it went up for PO two years ago and it took forever to get. I have two more PCS pieces on order and then I'm probably gonna be done for quite a while with them. But I am happy with this guy. I think PCS did a good job 
and uh, hopefully it's a sign that they will continue to do so. So if you have not subscribed, only about 50% of my viewers subscribe, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to watch the videos when they come up, but you have a notification so you can choose if it's something that interests you. So until tomorrow, Saturday, and it's an Infinity, Infinity Studios piece, I will tell you that much. Until then, take care.